Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to take a moment to thank Mr. Carrier for the American ingenuity and the development of air conditioning. Carrier with two R's. And thank you all for coming and bringing the elements, your smiling faces this morning. Cheers, my heart. Are there any announcements? Ron, he's thinking with how warm it is. If you guys get warm, feel free to turn the air on in the Belgian ball. It, it is on, okay, just making sure. All right, perfect. No announcements? Okay.
BC. Let us turn to the Most High in one and confess our sin, confident in God's faithful and steadfast love for us. Please join in the prayer of confession. Every faithful God, our Lord and we turn away from you, and yet you remain constant to us. We run from you what you call us have. In our words and our deeds we dishonor you, and yet you still profess your love for us. We cry ourselves out from you and from others, but you will not bless us out. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. When we were buried with Christ in baptism, we were also raised with him through faith in the power of God. By that power, we are made clean and set free to live in gratitude and love with zeal. As we have received Jesus Christ, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, and abounding in thanksgiving. Thanks be to God. God. Nothing to feed him. 
But what if the friend answers, well, I can't help you right now, it's too late. We're in bed. But imagine if you then kept on knocking. You just kept, kept on knocking. And then Jesus says, if you knock so long that you wake everyone in the neighborhood, your friend's going to get up and give you some bread. Now Jesus used this story to tell his friends and us to knock on God's door by asking for what you need. He says, everyone who asks will get what he asks for. Everyone who looks will find what he's looking for, and everyone who knocks will have the door open for him. Jesus said prayer is a way to ask, seek, and knock. Jesus even taught his disciples a way to pray. And we call this prayer, he taught them the Lord's Prayer. So, let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. First reading, Colossians, chapter 2, verses 6 to 15. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to walk in him, rooted and built up in, in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Watch out that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to elemental principles of the world and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of the deity dwells bodily. And you have come to fullness in him who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by the removal of the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God and who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands, he set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Next reading is the Psalms, Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, Excuse me. <clears throat> With my whole heart before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy heaven. And give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of their mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of God. For the Lord is not, he regards the Lord, but the Lord is the chief of all the Though I walk in the midst of the 
midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies, you stretch out your hand, and your right hand will deliver me. Lord, fulfill this purpose in me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. <laughs>
gospel reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Together, let's listen for the word of the Lord. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything out of friendship, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, would give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, would give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to ask everyone here a couple of questions this morning. Feel free to shout out, raise your hand, whatever you're comfortable with. And they don't need to be overly personal answers. They can be very general if you're more comfortable that way. But the first question is, why do you pray? What causes you to pray? What brings you to prayer? Anything. Anyone have, why do you guys pray on a daily basis? Communion with God. Communion with God. Makes me feel better. Makes you feel better. Amy, I saw your hand. I praise him and thank him because I pray to him because he's so mighty. And I, this week he has shown what he could do. Man, all oh, men. All oh, men with PhDs, this one and that, with masters and whatever like that. They, what they were doing, but God was strong with them. All right. It's all right with me now. Amen. And out of the day, oh Lord, how thank you. I don't forgive them everybody, the churches, the this and the that. This last week, he let me get it out. Anyone want to compete with that? Hey. We'll go on to the second hey. question. The second question is, how do you pray? Now, I don't mean hand placement if you're on your knees, you're sitting, you're standing. Remember, our passage begins with the disciples asking Jesus to teach them how to pray. And in response, Jesus teaches them the Lord's Prayer. So how do you guys pray? Do you say the Lord's Prayer by itself? Do you say it before or after your prayer with petitions? How does everyone pray? Nancy, yeah. Um, after. After. So you say the Lord's Prayer after you finish your, your own personal prayer. Okay. Anyone else? Bob, yeah. During. During. Okay. Chris? Oh, I bet I'm praying. All right. Now I have one more question. What is your mindset when you pray? Mm. Are you somber? Are you reflective? Are you, are you focused? How would you describe where your mind is at during prayer? Well, I started with feeling of gratitude. Okay. Yes. All right. We're going to get to something like that in a minute. Anything else? Any other mindsets? I heard gratitude. Okay. 
Keep your answers in mind. And now let's turn to our passage here in the book of Bible. And I want you guys to keep in mind an important part about the Gospel of Luke. We frequently will find Jesus in prayer, more so than any other Gospel, in fact. And here in chapter 11, the disciples want to know how to pray as well. Specifically, they ask Jesus to teach them just as John the Baptist taught his followers. And in response, we get a very early version of the Lord's Prayer. Now, clearly, it's a bit shorter than we're used to, and it's missing parts, but still, we all recognize this prayer in Luke immediately, because it has the basics of everything we say each week. And in this prayer from Luke, there are two main focuses of the prayer. First is our relationship with God, and the other is our relationship with others. Now, just think about the last couple of weeks here. We cannot escape the importance of how we treat our neighbors. We ask God to forgive us, but only as we also forgive others. Now, I know as hard as asking for forgiveness can be, even if it means asking God to forgive, Actively forgiving others may be even harder. Yes. We can struggle with forgiveness. That might sound silly at first. Forgiveness is easy. But ask yourselves, does Jesus call us to forgive others regardless of what they've said or done? Yes. I'm sure we can all think of things that we would consider unforgivable words or actions. But I heard something in the last few months that may help us here, because it really changed the way I think about forgiveness. Forgiveness is not something that we do for the other person or other people. Forgiveness is, above all else, something that we do for ourselves. Yes. Yes. I don't mean that we do it for some kind of reward. No, we forgive others because it brings us peace. We forgive others because until we do, we cannot fully accept God's forgiveness of us. We cannot receive that gracious gift from God with the weight of pain or anger or frustration weighing us down. We forgive because Christ asks us to forgive. Yes. We forgive because Christ asked God to forgive us. We forgive because God forgives us. It doesn't matter if the other person wants forgiveness or even thinks they need forgiveness. They are free to reject any offering of forgiveness because their response isn't what's important. What's important is that we have offered true forgiveness. And that is the key. Because offering forgiveness to others opens us up to God's forgiveness of us. Now, in this moment with the disciples, they ask Jesus how they should pray. And Luke tells us Jesus teaches them a short, simple prayer that calls all of us to forgive others so we may graciously receive God's forgiveness. Then after teaching them this prayer, and without the disciples asking further questions, Jesus decides, well, they probably need some more information, a little clarification. And that's not exactly an unfair assumption with these disciples, is it? Jesus tells a short parable and then adds a little extra to the end. Now first, Jesus tells the disciples to be persistent in prayer. Quickly praying one time isn't going to cut it. They must continue to pray. And so Jesus tells the story of a man receiving a guest at midnight. But he has no bread to offer this visitor. So he goes to his neighbor's house 
at midnight it begins knocking at midnight now at first this neighbor is like how we would probably all respond are you crazy it's midnight go away the kids are asleep and if you wake them so help me god right we can all relate to this neighbor but that host keeps on knocking until the neighbor finally answers the door. And we can all picture this groggy neighbor, right? Just rumbling as he goes down the stairs. You can just hear him just kind of mumbling in frustration and anger as he gets to the door. But ultimately, despite all the complaining and moaning, the neighbor gives him whatever he needs. Seems like a strange parable, to say the least. But we always have to remember, you've heard me say this before, we have to think of the time in which Jesus lived, in which they were hearing this story. Now today, we could probably never imagine knocking on a neighbor's door at midnight for some bread. But in the time of Jesus, hospitality was not just for the person receiving the guest. Hospitality was the responsibility of the entire village. Everyone was responsible in a way for welcoming a visitor, no matter the time. So despite his obvious frustration, the neighbor knew he needed to help. So he does. Now this parable has long been used to teach Christians that God may not answer at first, but if we keep at it, eventually God will respond. So then we get these additional few verses. Jesus says, ask, and it will be given. Search, and it will be found. Knock, and the door will be opened. And Jesus continues, using the idea of a parent to explain just how good God is. Is there anyone among you, asked Jesus, who, if your child asks for a fish, would give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, would give a scorpion? Now, of course, we know it's never that easy to understand. Because sadly, we've all heard those stories of some parents who would not only give the scorpion or the snake, probably laugh while doing it. But the real point for Jesus in this moment is that even in the best case scenario, where the parent gives the child everything the kid could possibly want in life, even then we cannot come close to the love that God has for each of us, or just how much God gives us in life. Because God gives the Holy Spirit. So, if the disciples were curious about prayer in the beginning of this passage, Jesus makes it clear just how important prayer is in living our Christian lives. But, does anyone see a problem with this common interpretation? I think there may be a few issues. The parable Jesus tells about the neighbor trying to sleep and wanting to be left alone. Any issues with that? Is God really a sleepy neighbor who yells at us when we come knocking? We may laugh at the neighbor's reaction thinking we would do the same. But God? Imagine you start to pray and God yells at you to stop. But it's only because you keep asking and keep asking and keep asking that God finally relents and answers. I don't know, it just doesn't seem like the God Jesus teaches us about so often. To me, God seems to be more in verses 9 and 10. Ask and be given. Search and it will be found. Knock and the door will be opened. All we have to do is ask, and God responds. I 
they sound a bit more correct, right? Does it? All we have to do in prayer is ask and God answers and gives. Anyone that ever pray and feel God did not respond? Anyone pray for a loved one to get better? Only for them to get sicker and sicker. Unfortunately, prayer is not as simple as it sounds in this passage. We have to admit that our prayers sometimes seem like they go unanswered. At least they do if we see prayer as an asked and answered conversation. Maybe we need to relook at our views on prayer. Prayer should not be seen as a chance to ask God for something and await God's response. That's not prayer. God is not a sleepy neighbor we need to wake up and pester before we get an answer. Prayer should not, prayer should not just be asked and answered. Prayer should just be used as a time for our deepest desires. Does that seem right? No, prayer isn't a birthday list. You see, prayers should really be understood as our response to God. God stirs our prayers within us, and then we respond to God by praying. God is the one who initiates prayer, not us. Prayer is not about God responding to us. Prayer is about us responding to God. It isn't about God answering or not answering. God does. It isn't about God being attentive or not. God is. God is always listening to us, always seeking us. If we're persistent in praying, it shouldn't be because we think God will eventually answer the way we want. Instead, we should be persistent in prayer because prayer enables us to enjoy God's presence in our lives. God has already given us more than we could possibly imagine. And still, God keeps giving. What else can we really do but pray? We bring our joys and concerns, our happiness and our fears not because we expect God to answer the way we want. We pray because God seeks relationship with us, and we should do the same. Prayer is our response to all that God has given us. When we think of prayer as a chance to get what we want, we're missing the point. When we bring our joys to God, we do so because God has made our joys possible. When we bring our frustrations to God, our anger, our sadness, we do so because God is always with us, always present. God will hear us. But remember, prayer is about our response, not God's. Friends, our passage from Luke is all about prayer. Luke challenges us to change our prayer lives. Prayer is our chance to have a conversation with God because God is always listening. Yes. God is always seeking us when we're lost. God dines with us when we've been cast out by all others in our lives. God protects us. God cares for us. Yes. So how can we do anything else but pray? That even when we're going through a tough, awful, scary time, yes. God is present. Yes. Whatever it is that brought us to prayer may end in sadness, mm -hmm. may end in tears and pain, but it will never end with us being forgotten by God. God is always with us. God hears our prayers and hears our response to God with an open heart. So pray. 
Respond to everything God has done in your life with prayer. And trust, have faith that God is listening to you always. Always. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, send your spirit to fill our hearts that we may come to you in prayer. Not so that we may ask you for blessings, but rather that we may thank you for the blessings we already have. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, please rise if you're able for our next hymn, number 175, Seek Ye First. Any others? 
Amy, yeah.
Bestow your good gifts as you see fit, supplying every need by the power of your spirit. Accept all these prayers we offer in faith, even as you continue to teach us to pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, friends, with grateful hearts, let us bring our tithes and our offerings to the God from whom they came.
preserve you, protect and keep you this day and for all eternity. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. Amen. Amen.